Monsters with Eminent Monsters. How are you guys today? Cracking. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yes, of course. Thanks for coming. So tell us a little bit about your film, Eminent Monsters. Okay. Shall I introduce us first? Yeah, of course. So my name's, uh, am I looking at you? or Sorry. Am I looking at you? Where yeah, look looking? at me. Where look do you me. want me to look? Just you. Okay. So um, my name is Stephen Bennett. I'm the director of this film. I've spent 10 years trying to get this film made. And this is Mark Fallon. Hi. Nice to be here with you. Why Thanks you for coming. Give an idea of who you are, Mark. Yeah, sure. I, I, I spent 31 years with the United States government working national security issues. Most of the time I was a special agent with the Naval Criminal Investigative Service, NCIS, like the TV show, but more overweight and not as good looking. Totally. And, and uh, I've worked a lot of counterterrorism investigations over, over my career. Okay. And uh, Eminent Monsters highlights some of my work. Great. Tell us about yourself, Stephen. So I'm a Scottish director. I've been doing my job for 20 plus years, 24 years. I've made lots of films along that time from uh, school shootings, like our Dunblane incident, which is like uh, your Stone Park and, and various other shootings uh, in elementary school, to veterans of post-traumatic stress, to uh, other films about people who are, effectively people who are struggling. I do social-led documentaries, human interest documentaries. And for 10 years, whilst doing other films, I've been trying to get this film made. In 2017, we got a sort of green light. We began to get a bit of seed money to develop it a bit more. And then I spoke to Mark and all the other contributors, and we had to try to get to the next stage, which is actually get solid funding. So where we are now, it's funded by two people, BBC, and our film, ar our film um, arm in Scotland called Creative Scotland. So that allows us to have this 89 minute film. So no, it's fantastic. And this is an international premiere. Mm -hmm. So to be here in Traverse City, I've never been to Michigan before. What do you think about it so far? Beautiful, utterly beautiful. It's spellbinding. It's, it's, uh, if you had to try to kind of draw an idea of what a film festival should be like, it would be like this. Because we had a lift with Bryn, um, who gave us a, one of the volunteers, gave us a drive around the city and outside the city as mm -hmm. well to give us an idea of your place. It's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. i got to tell you, it's a, a gorgeous area. The people here are, are not just friendly and warm, but they're very engaged. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you have a town of activists who really want to know issues and, and are happy to talk about issues with you. So it's, it's, it's a phenomenal festival, and I'm just uh, delighted to be here with you guys. Yeah, of course. We're so glad you're here. So tell us about your film. So Eminent Monsters, a manual for modern torture. This is very early in the morning. It's 10.30 where we are standing. So it's quite a hard subject. It's, mm -hmm. it's about collusion between Britain, America, and Canada to systematically design a program of psychological torture to be used within from Montreal in the 1950s and 60s to the Northern Ireland Troubles in the 1970s to Guantanamo and all the dark sites. And through that, we show a kind of long line of this program that's been used to fundamentally break people down in a very quick way. So the best way I, when I was trying to get this made, that people made me understand, and we talk about prison, uh, so I use this analogy. I could put you in prison for two years. You should be okay, because your time and space is able to understand where you are. Mm -hmm. We can put people through this program, and within 24 hours to 48 hours, you'll be in a diagnosable psychotic state. That's how quick. Now, last night we had a, a screening at the Bijou in the Bay, mm -hmm. which was brilliant. And we were trying to talk to people about the, the issues. So you have torture and then you have psychological torture. Mm -hmm. So if I hurt Mark physically, he'll show all the contusions and he'll show all the evidence of torture, mm -hmm. whether that's breakages or whatever it might be. If I try to alter how your, your mind works in using these techniques, it has lasting damage. We see people with post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. But equally, it's so effective. People like me can be taught how to do these techniques mm -hmm. in a matter of minutes because it's putting a bag over people, putting goggles over people. So it starts with a program called MK Ultra in Montreal with a Scottish doctor, hence my involvement. And you see techniques that he developed, along others, which then get played out. Britain tries out the same techniques in Northern Ireland amongst its own, on its own citizens for the first time. And then we see in uh, 2002, when the Bush administration had a massive roundup uh, under the war on terror, they used a uh, European Court of Human Rights legal precedent 
that allowed these techniques to be used. And then it was used now become enhanced interrogation techniques. And, and maybe Mark can take over from this point. Sure, and while they called them enhanced interrogation techniques, EITs, they were actually just excuses to inflict torture. Mm -hmm. And so what we saw that got me into this film uh, was these techniques, these practices, these methods uh, morphing from the CIA to Guantanamo Bay, where I was responsible for the investigation of terrorists for trials for military commissions. And then the techniques spread on to Abu Ghraib. And so it, it, it turned into a international disaster for the United States, for the United Kingdom, for anyone in Western civilization, mm -hmm. because we've shown that these practices developed by psychologists to really dehumanize people uh, were instituted into national policies. So we had national policies of state-sponsored torture. And mm -hmm. the benefit of eminent monsters is, while we've been misled, the American public, the uh, global public, about kind of the effectiveness and the necessity of these techniques, what eminent monsters does is tell us the truth about torture. And it puts a human side to it. So mm -hmm. you will actually hear from former Al-Qaeda members who I investigated at Guantanamo, uh, Mohamedou Slahi, who was brutally tortured, who's now released, mm -hmm. and in Mauritania, uh, Mozambique, others, uh, the hooded men from Northern Ireland. Uh, so so it's, a, it's an amazing uh, chronicle uh, that everyone really needs to see, to see the truth about what was done in our names. And to give you an idea of, of why this is important, our belief, uh, and along with the other contributors, that this is not history. Mm -hmm. It starts off with history, but actually takes you way up to the present day. So, because I'm from Britain, Britain had has just denied a judicial inquiry into our um, our assistance with your rendition project, your rendition program. So it, it's very timely, it's very important, and the spread of these techniques, we can we can see forensically that they've spread over to 27 countries. So these techniques that started in Montreal in, in, in Northern Ireland and in all the dark sites have then morphed and been used by 27, other, 27 other countries. Mm -hmm. Now, it's clear other countries like Russia or China will be also using these techniques, but we can't prove they're being used as a result of a CIA program. Right. So this is massive. So you're talking about a massive spread. Every country from things like Australia to Yemen are using it. You know, there's a huge difference between those two countries. Mm -hmm. And we're part of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, being here, last night we had a screening at the Bijou. And there was one guy who really, you know, we had lots of really great questions. But then there was a big uh, Michigander, a guy called RK, who came up and stood up and said, you've changed my mind. This is probably is the biggest compliment you can be given as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. as a documentarian. I don't know about for you, but to have someone who believed that he believed in the message that the government was telling him mm -hmm. and to say you changed my mind is phenomenal yeah i think that's a goal of a lot of filmmakers especially films that we bring yeah, to the yeah. film festival that's definitely why you're here so steven i know you talked about a little bit when we started your passion with kind of social change yeah. now when you came across this topic uh did you meet mark to learn more about it or how did you guys meet so in 2017 when we started getting the funding i started reading as much as i could and I read Mark's book. So we're doing a book signing today at Brilliant Books, uh, and Mark's got an amazing book called Unjustifiable Means. Now, seriously, I, in fact, I'll Mark only, only found this out the other day. When I read Unjustifiable Means, I remember speaking to my producer, John Archer, mm -hmm. in Scotland, and saying, we need to get this guy on board. Get yeah. this guy on board. And what I liked about Mark is Mark gave me a Skype interview to try to find out how much I knew before he agreed to be part of this. Oh, interesting. As long as I was being auditioned. Okay to see whether I was good enough. Yeah. And I loved that. Yeah. Because apart from the pressure, I loved the fact that Mark was trying to say, okay, let's see what you know before I, I jump shut, I jump right. off this boat. Yeah, and that was really what impressed me is his his knowledge and his passion about this topic. So I'm, I'm, I'm so proud to have contributed to this movie and proud to be here with him today. Yes, thank you guys so much for coming and thank you guys for watching. We'll stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you.